What is up, everybody? Welcome into the Creed of Crypto live stream. How are you doing? I am Broke Boy Crypto, and I have here with me, as always, my friend and co host, Crypto Ewok. Welcome into the chat. We see Footsteps is here. We got DJ Moon Boy, and I'm sure we'll have some more pouring in as well. We got a lot to talk about tonight. There's been a lot of developments in the DeFi world of Pulse Chain over the last week and the greater crypto world. Um, so, some major topics. And, and, you know, just like we have on the thumbnail tonight, uh, why does this bull market not feel like a bull market? Maybe it's just if you're invested in Pulse Chain. Maybe it's other people <laughs> as well. But right now, um, a lot of lot of salty tears as we have in the thumbnail over the last few weeks for sure. We have Bitcoin pulling back and ETH pulling back, so really a lot of things are pulling back right now, and people are pulling their hair out. But uh, hey, it's still April of 2024, so we're going to get into all that and a whole lot more. But Ewok, how are you feeling this evening about the markets and life in general? Oh, uh, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. I mean, you know, it's clear that some people just aren't going to make it, man. <laughs> you know, when you look around and you see what's going on and Lots of capitulation and lots of people freaking out and saying the same thing that the the thumbnail says. Why does it suck so bad? What's going on? Why aren't we moving anywhere? And you know, it, it it's all part of the part of the fun, man. Part of the uh, mental game that is a bull bear cycle, and you got to get through it. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. People just hanging and hanging there, and we'll be fine. I think part of what it is, too, is just like, you know, especially with crypto, like we're all here looking at this stuff. I, I've said this before, covering it every single day, talking about it every single day. We do this show once a week and then release clips over the course of the week. But there's so many people out there covering, tweeting, doing all these things about this market all the time. And as we know, there are big time drawbacks or not drawbacks, but draw um, downs uh, in the market. Yeah dips, whatever you want to say, um, that, you know, are not as fun to report on. And, you know, people get really emotional because the charts are, you know, they go a lot of different directions very quickly. So um, the one good thing is, um, you know, to keep looking at the calendar and remember, like, we're in 2024 now. We're entering the second quarter of it. We're nearing the Bitcoin halving. We're starting to maybe see that pullback going into the halving. So I guess we'll just go there now. Um, when I wrote the notes just the other day, BTC was still hanging around 70K, but we've really seen it pull back here today, uh, sitting at about 65.5K. ETH has now gone back below 3,300. And we're going to talk a little about ETH tonight because um, a lot of people uh, on Twitter and stuff like that lately, I think... I think basically Ethereum and most of the altcoin space, minus a handful of crazy meme coins, apparently, have just been kind of taking a beating in comparison to Bitcoin so far. Because, you know, we've said this before. I mean, nobody expected Bitcoin to already hit a new all-time high pre-having and, you know, shouting of the left translated cycle idea and things like that. Uh, but the ETH ratio just hasn't closed in enough yet. And it's got people literally, I don't even know how this is real, but literally people calling for the death of Ethereum. And, you know, the Bitcoin finally proves king. I mean, we know that that's utter insanity, but yeah. it, it is happening nonetheless. And, and ETH, you know, has been a little bit of a laggard compared to Bitcoin here. But we talked about this before, too. Ethereum was also super strong in the bear market. You know, as we headed into the bear market, man, I can't believe it was this far back, but I think September of 2021 is when they started making some of the upgrades. Well, I don't even remember what that one was at this point. Um, sharding, farting, farting. <laughs> I, I don't know what it was. Something happened that month. Um, but uh, Or maybe it was the, the move to proof of stake. I don't remember what it was. But um, we saw it hold up really well. So now we're seeing ETH not do as well. So overall, what do you kind of make of this pullback we're seeing here? And maybe, again, more importantly for us, Ethereum and most of the market really at this point, Ethereum catching up to Bitcoin can and will that happen soon? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, you mentioned it yourself. It's been strong. So it really never got the major pullback. I think, uh, what did it get down to? Eight or 900 uh, on Ethereum? Yeah, I get so, I mean, it, it, it stayed extremely strong. Many people predicted it to come down to four or 500. Um, and it just never got there. It, it, it didn't, you know, half of that or twice that anyway w was the low. So, you know, because of all the upgrades, because of the proof of stake, and that's what it was, I think, when what you're yeah. talking about was the move to Ethereum 2 when it actually launched, it stayed really strong. Um, and, and, and now, you know, 
because Bitcoin is pulling back and because they're so tied together, um, that's what we're seeing. It, it, it's just a, a lull in the markets before the halving happens, like it does every single cycle. Um, people kind of pull back. They wait because they, they know or have been here before. Um, so there's just not a whole lot of action. There's a lot of talk, you know, about the ETF as well. Um, you know, there's so there's a lot of bullish things to come. But I, I, when things are down, you know, usually we say that's the time to buy. And it really technically should be. We're get, catching some of these dips. Um, now is the time if you haven't yet. Obviously, you know, we've been preaching it for, for months and months on end is to buy some of these prices. But um, <clears throat> if you haven't started... DCA on some of these red candles, I mean, this is probably as good as it's going to get for a while. Um, you know, mm -hmm. probably another couple weeks uh, and having, having happens, uh, once that happens, you know, it usually takes off. Things start to run. We see the Bitcoin and Ethereum prices go up. And then after a while, a lot of that value gets drawn out of that and then into your altcoins. And that's what we actually call the altcoin season. And, you know, some of these had had a, a pre run up and, and things like that. But uh, the majority of the markets will follow suit with Bitcoin as it runs up. Ethereum will too. You know, you'll, you'll even see Litecoin and Doge and all these other ones start to creep up as well because, you know, the rising, the rising tide lifts all boats. So, Mm -hmm. happen um it's just it's part of the cycle um it's it, it's it's in that i think we're in the what is it um i forget what part of the cycle the name of the the cycle you know um i, but I, I guess it's in that bottom level area is what i was getting at yeah, I guess it depends on maybe which asset you're looking at. Because I mean, some so that that's kind of a sentiment thing, and I think it's different with the different. Like you know, if you would look at the the Wall Street cheat sheet for Bitcoin right now versus ETH or Pulse Chain, I think you're getting different sentiments. Probably, <laughs> I don't think the Bitcoin sentiment compared to like the Pulse Chain sentiment would be exactly the same thing right now. Um, but yeah, no, I understand where you're coming from. It's definitely at the, the lower point at the moment. Yeah, so. I think we're in the depression phase is, is yeah, what, it, what it really is. You, you know, we've already passed the anger. Um, now people are just depressed. And, you know, again, once the having happens, you know, things will start to look up and we'll be in better shape. Yeah, I think so too. Um, speaking of Pulse Chain, if we want to turn the page over to that ecosystem, so uh, a, a viewer just before we went on the air actually reminded me in a comment on one of our other videos, um, you and I had a gentleman's wager uh, on last week's program about the Pulse Chain price, and I said uh, just put you on the spot and said, "Hey, do you think Pulse goes below sac rate ever again?" You you kind of hemmed and hawed, but ultimately said you think that it would. I steadfastly said that it would not go below sack rate again. So you have won uh, said wager. So congratulations for hey, just for everybody for the prices being down right now. Uh, you have Ewok to blame because I didn't. You know, <laughs> that wasn't something that I I programmed in. Uh, but yeah, we do sit here a little bit below sack rate. Um, you know, since Sunday, we really started to see some of these prices come down. We sit with Pulse at just below sack rate, about um, the, the four zeros nine six right now. Pulse X is now the whole way down to sixty two percent below the sack rate, and that that ratio, which maybe we can talk about for a moment between Pulse and Pulse X, has crept back up into the two point five ish range, which frankly is where it was not even a month ago. I think sure. so. Not that big of a move, but uh, incentive token under five dollars, about four seventy five now. Hex at just under a penny, and e hex. I, I don't know if I should report on this or if Go I'm going to get in it. trouble, uh, but it's at two tenths of a penny right now. So, um, yeah, things are down, uh, and you know we saw some wallets that may may not be connected to a sacrifice wallet making some moves when Pulse Chain kind of ever got down towards that sack rate, uh, but we've seen it come down below there right now so if you want to take a look at the pulse charty walk and maybe we can just kind of see what we're seeing here i mean what you know we had that beautiful like stair step thing going for a while things just were very very bullish for really about a couple of months um just the way things were looking there and now we've come down into a level i mean where there is historical support more so from back you know last summer after launch probably for a bit um but yeah what do you make of this and 
I, I still think in this range, like we're gearing up here. I mean, I, I don't think we go very much lower than this. I mean, again, I didn't even think we would go below sack rate. So um, what do you make of where we're at right now? Well, I drew this line on here when I was pre- predicting where I thought it, it could possibly go. And it was right about, you know, 8,500 or, you, you know, the four zeros, eight, five, and it got close. And I think it technically still could bounce down a little bit further. Um, I, I, I think what's happening is when these bigger wallets step in um, and there's buy pressure, there's a couple things that happen, right? They're being so heavily reported on um, that everybody's saying, oh, here comes this this wallet yeah. is, is buying. Um, it's a big signal to the traders <clears throat> who don't really follow the wallet or, you know, they're, they're not doing their own blockchain analysis or anything like that. It's a signal. They're, they're saying, oh, let's let it buy it up and uh, we'll just sell it right off and we'll buy it back when, a little bit lower. And, and and I think that's what you're seeing on a lot of these moves. Now, um, I, th- I think that entity will soon get tired of that and just say, screw it. I'm waiting until right. you guys shake it all out before I start, you know, interfering or, or doing anything more. So I think that's what's causing it a little bit. However, um, I, I do think that some of these levels here will get people will start to step in. I mean, it's that's what it's got to take. You know, you can only you can only rely on green candles so much to to market with. And when you have green candles and they immediately get sold down, it's just not good marketing. Right. Mm -hmm. So you either have to let it play out or dump a pile of cash into it to just run right past it. Um, And and then, again, you still have those people involved that are, are traders um, and, you know, we've fought for a long time to tell people that trading is not the right way to do this. You know, mm-hmm. it should be about long term holds, delayed gratification, dollar cost average in and, and let the cycle play out. And, you know, when you onboard people, you tell them the same thing. But, you know, when you get a brand new blockchain, you do attract a lot of that trader mentality um, a lot of people playing the games in and out of coins, thinking this one's better than this one. So we'll sell positions and they're just all over the place. So it does take a while to, to settle and even out and, um, let the money get distributed correctly before you can really have a floor and, mm-hmm. and really start to run. But, you know, as time goes on, as more people lose on trades, uh, the less there are because they start getting burned and realize that that's not the right game to play. Or they take a look at their wallet size and be like, man, originally I had half a, a half a billion coins and I'm down to like 400 million, 300 million because I've been in and out of all this stuff trying to game the system and it's not working so well for me. You brought up a great point that uh, I hadn't thought of as much. And I, kn- I know people have been tweeting about it a bit. And, you know, full disclosure, I mean, you and I both have been trying as much as we can to stay off of Twitter the last couple of weeks because it's just been horrible. But, um, you know, yeah, I think some of these people that do report on the big moves and, uh, you know, I know that Martin account is one of them. And then there, there's like the, I don't want to call them bot accounts, but like ones that are just anonymous, like whatever, pulse chain moves and stuff like that. Um, you do bring up a good point about the front running thing. You know, it reminds me as somebody who used to be more interested in the sports betting world of like, there's a couple big time like betting syndicates out there that were essentially like, I, I think they call them like screen scrapers, basically, where it's like you would just be looking at all of the odds boards and you have like 30 different sports books up there. And like, you can't do this as much anymore. But back in the day, you could start to see moves happening and then just bam, like all these different accounts you have start front running moves at different books that had mm-hmm. sports books that hadn't moved yet. And th- while the edges there um, were much smaller, I think, uh, than than what there is here. Um you know, I mean, you're literally getting signal like, oh, hey, a half a million dollars or a million dollar buy might be coming in in a few minutes and you can make moves. I mean, that's yeah. you make a great point. And while I don't think that ma- that doesn't matter as much, I think, when everything's going up, like when the whole market's kind of pushing up, I don't know that that will be as impactful. But certainly right, right now where we're kind of like two steps forward, one steps back, one step forward, two steps back. It, you, you're seeing that. I think you're definitely seeing that. So, yeah. 
I've seen people saying like, you know, maybe I should start reporting on him or we should start reporting on it or whatever. I think I, I personally think I would appreciate that, but it's a Pandora's box that's been opened. I mean, it's like trying to say now, like, you know what? No more sandwiches. We're just going to ban sandwiches. <laughs> uh, the idea is out there. We all, you know, you people eat sandwiches. So I don't know. What do you make of that? I mean, it, it, maybe for the accounts like that Martin account, and I, I'm pro I'm no, I'm missing other people, but like people who individually are doing it themselves just to look at on chain data. But yeah, what do you make of that? I mean, I don't think that's something you can just like put away now, you know? Well, I think they can take advantage of it though. I think what needs to happen is if they really want to offer that service, maybe privatize it. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. make people pay for it. Lazy people are not going to pay for it. Um, you know, some of the traders might, but it's going to eliminate probably half of the people that are trying to front run it. You know, it's the lazy ones that aren't really doing any kind of research at all. And I remember, you know, I always appreciated Silver, the antidote um mm. his account his was private and he would he would put hours and hours and hours of work into studying a lot of different wallets and movements and um game theories and things like that behind a lot of what was happening but that was when it was just hex right so i yeah. mean there was a, it was a little narrowed down a little bit more mm -hmm. now that it's an entire ecosystem it's a, a little bit harder uh for people to understand who's who and who the players are but i i think it would be a good opportunity for for people like that to if you want to create a subscription and and broadcast it there an idea for for them um that way it's not general public and i you know i just i hate the thought of people just doing it for the the clicks and the likes and things like that right. um it doesn't serve that kind of purpose it creates again it creates the trader mentality that we've you know worked pretty hard to to get away from the from that and explain to people that you know time in the market is much better than trying to time the market um and and now that's just gone by the wayside and people are back to being degens so mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think closing it would be something that, that those individuals would probably even benefit more from too. I mean, like if you could just get sure. paid directly, why not, you know, um, yeah. by some people. So I don't know. It's not one of those things you could just snap your fingers and make go away, but it, it'll be interesting to monitor for sure. Um, and, and another point that I had actually about like this recent sell off. So, um, you know, you could say like whatever the, you could make what, look at the chart and then, you know, somebody will tell you the news. I understand that. But on Sunday, I think it was, um, is when we saw some more moves from the Bank X folks. Um, so we saw that they bridged over, I believe it was all of their EHEX. They bridged to Pulse Chain. So, yeah. <clears throat> you know, makes sense to do so, obviously, uh, well, I don't know if they, they would have really been dealing with fees or care about fees, honestly. <laughs> but um, so they pulled their liquidity for the whole bag. I think it's how, how much is it? 700? 740 million X. Yeah. yeah. So they bridged it all to Pulse Chain. I found this very comical. But speaking of some of the bot accounts that uh, tweet out moves. That Hex Alerts account um, literally said Bank X sent 200 million E Hex to bridge E Hex going to zero. Like yeah, they that. tweeted that themselves. Uh, that. And then, yeah, and then quote tweeted it and said it was the whole 700 million. Um, now, where was I going with this? So, yeah, Bank X moves it all over. Um, they had been set to trade it between one and a half and three cents or something like that. Obviously, yeah, I don't know when those numbers are coming back. Uh, now that we're two tenths of a penny. Um, but they bridged all over to Pulse on Sunday. I, I, originally, I was going to ask what you think is going on here, but it does look like they are. Um, they do have a plan for it. So they moved it on to the nine millimeter exchange, which I don't know if you've ever used yet. Ewok, I, but it, I, I have played around mm -hmm. with it. Not not as much like a not as much as I would like to. Um, mm -hmm. I, I knew I do know there's some opportunity on there for some liquidity providing, but yeah. But yeah, so they moved their entire stack over to there. Um, I right. think they created a range of uh, point zero zero seven yep. up to double that, which is uh -huh. 1.4 cents, I believe. Um, but what they failed to do was provide any liquidity in the full range for the token. 
And when they put that liquidity at that spot, everybody else pulled their entire liquidity. So there is literally no other liquidity in there except for them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you do that, um, it really screws everything up uh, because they have a range set. There's really nothing to buy in between where it's at now and 0 0.007. Um, so a couple um, community members I saw put in like just a few hundred dollars of liquidity just so that it didn't screw everything up because it can really mess things up if you don't have um, a full range of liquidity. Um, it, it can, it, it just, it messes with the, um, the ratios and everything like that gets all messed up and then it's very hard to correct. So luckily we had some people step in, provide liquidity for the full range. I realized it was only a couple hundred bucks, so it may get to that point a little bit quicker. Uh, right. But yet again, people just don't want to buy. They don't want to sell, you know, they don't want to buy into that and be their exit liquidity. So I, I don't know. I, I wish they just would have kind of dumped it and taken it all the way down um, and been gone, but you know, it doesn't seem to be that that's what they want to do. They want to just wait it out. We'll see how patient they are, right? Uh, that's going to be the key. How patient are they? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be a virtue for them right now because I mean, they were already waiting long enough, you know, it's like a year basically, and then um, we see some of the action that's happened with eHex over the last couple of weeks. And it's like all those prices that they were hoping for that they didn't think would be all that far off. None of us did uh, until a, a certain day. Um, you know, now they look so far in the rear view mirror that, uh, that there may not be a way that we can get there. So, well, they um, could have had um, $8 million at one point. I think somebody offered $8 million to buy them out um, yeah. OTC and they said, no, they didn't. They didn't want to entertain that offer. So now they're probably yeah. really wishing that they would have. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it is interesting to at least see them move it over to there. We'll have to see what does come of it. But, you know, obviously a lot of people have been scared off of eHex for a while now, um, you know, because, you know, Richard Hart's tweets, but also the, the market was already choosing the other direction as well. So, um, We've talked about like Richard Hart tweeting about it. I mean, I don't, I've never necessarily felt that it was the best idea to even. It, I, he didn't do anything. He, all he did was relay what the market was saying. And I agree with that. And I understand that. But still, people are stupid, though. And, you yeah. know, they read that and they kind of read something else into it and, you know, sell off when they probably shouldn't have, but, um, you know, that there could, there could yeah. have been something else at play there too, regarding a certain law case that, yeah, um, is happening right now. You know, there, there, there could have been something along those lines too, to detract, you know, I think we're, we'll talk about that later, aren't we? Yeah, Why don't we'll we talk about it? I mean, no, it's a good transition, honestly, because sure. like I have so many things here and we're jumping around to whatever makes sense to yeah. go to. So um, real quick, if you guys are here and enjoying the stream so far, do us a favor, hit the like. We appreciate it. We do this every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, great point brought up by you, Ewok. Yeah. Um, so we had some updates from Richard Hart's attorneys as they look to get rid of uh, these you know, yucky people within the SEC after they came um, basically for a monetary shakedown of Richard Hart. Uh, hopefully Gary Ginsburg will be gone soon and we can get, you know, past this. And uh, I don't not that I don't think people are even really worried about the SEC anymore. And that's a, a bigger conversation I, I want to have with you in a minute about a poll that Toby won. Hexobi posted the other day. Um, but first, we had updates from Richard Hart's attorneys uh, since the motion motion to dismiss from there and is due here in six days on April the 8th. And the there was a discovery plan that on the original calendar was due on April the 5th here. What RH's attorneys are trying to do is basically put a stay on that and postpone it because once they show everything that they're going to show in the motion to dismiss, it, it wouldn't make sense to have a discovery plan because there's too many too many issues about the faulty SEC uh, complaint lawsuit right. that will be debunked, like jurisdiction among many other things. Um, so yeah, Nuclear Herbs had a really good tweet on it. I think that, I think, well, uh, I'll go pull it up here real quick. I was gonna say, I think I pretty much covered what it is there. Um, let me just see what he said real quick. Yeah, so 
He said um, that RH's attorneys are asking to delay the filing for the discovery plan. That's what we said. This isn't entirely surprising because until the motion to dismiss gets decided, uh, you really don't know all of the issues you'll need discovery on. So we said that too. RH's attorneys think that his personal jurisdiction jurisdiction argument has some real teeth. And Nuclear Herbs said before in his Paul Chain Law, Law School uh uh, post about this issue. And if RH wins on this one single issue, the case is gone. Uh, again, they feel that there's no need to conduct discovery if they win on that one issue and they're right. Uh, they note that the absolute bizarreness of the SEC having named software as defendants in a lawsuit raises issues that need to be resolved before any discovery should be done. That's another good point, too, that they were listed Pulse, Pulse X, Hex as defendants, basically. Uh, and then finally, he says, on the flip side, when the court balances the interests of the parties, they're claiming that the SEC isn't being prejudiced at all, which is both mostly true and very important to a court's decision. He says, I'd put money on the SEC filing something claiming the sky will fall if the court grants this stay. It won't be true, but it's not like the SEC is filing uh, true things lately anyway. So he's totally right. And um, that does. Yeah, I should have sent that to you. That brings well, me. That's OK, because okay. that brings me to this other one. But go ahead and right. finish what okay. you thought there. I was just going to say um, with, with his last thought there about um, which part was I talking about filing claim? Uh, yeah, about the SEC filing something saying the sky will fall if they grant this stay. We're going to get there because a lot of people seem to think that this is going to be easy peasy and just like wipe our hands of this and the motion to dismiss gets granted and we we move on. That'd be wonderful. And I, I and I do definitely think that our age's attorneys are focusing on the absolute right things. I think the jurisdiction thing is at, is preposterous. Like, oh, one of the one of the devs or somebody that worked on Uniswap is based in New York. And at least one hex investor was in the Southern District of New York. It's like, right. yeah. All right, so let's have it in Omaha. Let's have it in Sarasota. Let's have, you know, name Boulder, Colorado, wherever you want to go. I'm sure they're all there too. Um, there's that. And then the other issue, naming the decentralized blockchain and DEX as defendants themselves. I mean, they, they are real things. These aren't, I mean, this, this is part of what we said about this complaint from the SEC is throwing a lot of shit at the wall to see what sticks. That's that's the shit right there. So yeah. um, if you wanted to, I, I didn't see what that tweet said, but go ahead with what you had up there too. Well, no, because later on he says, pay particular attention to the se this sentence. Or, um, Richard Hart's attorneys are going to make the SEC prove that they've properly alleged all of the elements of personal jurisdiction with respect to Hex, Pulse, and Pulse X individually. They're not going to let the SEC claim that properly alleging jurisdiction with respect to one token gets them jurisdiction over everything, <clears throat> which he says is a very solid tactic and a, and a good move in his opinion. Um, I, I don't think the SEC thought this through when they drafted their complaint because they were pretty sloppy um, about how they allege jurisdiction. Um, mm -hmm. and so, so basically what he's saying is um, even though that jurisdiction may be true for hex they can't just ball it into one thing and treat it all the same mm -hmm. because pulse chain and pulse x have absolutely nothing to do with uniswap um and you know therefore at least some of those claims should be dismissed um so you know if you can narrow some things down and say all right you're claiming this 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 uh, when really you have no right to claim this, this, and this, mm -hmm. you only have this now. It, when your argument gets narrowed down to just one thing, it's so much easier to fight um, than than just having all these different things come in. So if we can at least get those couple things dismissed, um, it it would be you know so helpful to the you know to the attorneys that are that are making this case. Yeah. And it also leads me to this question because, you know, on the Uniswap thing, you know, three of the tokens and, you know, we've mentioned before, incentive isn't even included in this. So uh, three of the four tokens, like you said, have nothing to do with Uniswap. Could this also be, and I'm not trying to change the subject, it just happens to go with this, but with some of the recent tweeting of Richard Hart, and it's me, like I said, a few minutes ago, feeling like it was ill-advised, 
Could part of it be because of what you just said, that the original OG Hex Classic, which I haven't really heard anybody saying at all lately, um, <laughs> that that is the only one that's really tied to Uniswap ever, even though it's still an incredibly weak argument yep. uh, for jurisdiction. That is the only one, you know, based on, I think, what his attorneys could argue, that they could have any even remote, puny, little, piddly claim about. Um, right. I mean, there is wrapped false. I I do. I really do think a lot of that um, because if he can get that kind of, I don't even say down to zero, but very inactive and people have moved away from it over to Pulse Chain, um, the argument kind of becomes, well, no one's using that, man. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We created a new chain and and no one's even using that anymore. So um, would it help? Uh, Well, I I don't know. I, I don't know if they say, yeah, but you can't say, well, I, 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 there was a robbery over here, but you know, we moved towns. We're no longer there anymore. Well, mm-hmm. you know, things still happen, whatever. So I don't know what kind of grounds that holds, but either way, like I said, if you can narrow it down to one thing, you know, there are four items. Yes. In incentive is not there, but there's Richard Hart and then there's the three tokens. So, you know, there, there are mm-hmm. four things that they're really going after. One of them is the, uh, misappropriation of funds as well, which again, if he's got receipts, that's pretty easy to prove, right? I mean, that's that's either you did it or you didn't do it, and here's my proof. So um, that seems pretty simple. This is, like I said, though, I think this is a big argument to where if you can tell them, well, you don't even have jurisdiction over this, so this shouldn't even be brought up in this case at all. Um, it's going to do a couple things, right? It's going, like I said, it's going to narrow it down for them. And it's also going to probably create some discredit um, of the SEC in the in the judge's eyes too, because it, you know it looks like they didn't do their homework at all um, and just yeah. threw a bunch of stuff together. So they don't like their time wasted either. Um, and if you can make the judge feel like you know her time is being wasted uh, because they just threw a bunch of arguments together or threw shit at the wall to see what would stick, they don't like that. So. Um, it, it could turn out to be in, in their favor to, to just even bring it up. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's very smart tactic. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, and you just said, too, I mean, the SEC, the SEC already has lost incredible, incredible credibility for quite right. some time now. I mean, I think the judge, you know, it, it's public information. If you're going to be taking on a case that has a... Um, you know, petitioner in it as big as the SEC, you obviously are going to be familiar with what's been going on between the SEC and all these crypto entities, you know, and then you got this lawsuit running congruently with one that's already way further down the line with the SEC versus Coinbase right now, which we're going to get to some developments we saw there the other day. Um, Yeah, I couldn't disagree more with Thomas, obviously, on this point. I know you were probably going to say the same thing. Um, I I don't know how else to express this. And I know I'm saying this kind of like in a cursory manner, but I don't think anyone gives a shit about this lawsuit. Like the SEC, uh, it just is not a a threat. It's just not, you know, they, they, they're losing anybody that they attack in crypto. Everybody knows Gary Gensler is um, just, I I just don't understand how somebody could even think that at this point. Like we're in a bull market now. I just don't consider it a threat. We'll have more to expand upon that in a moment with a poll that was run the other day. Yeah. What do you make of? uh, Well, I think there are people that are very leery to invest. Um, However, there are a bunch of people like, like you said, don't care. Um, And when the prices of, of things go up, um, and people start rotating into certain things that are still technically a, a buy um, or on sale, I guess would be a better way to put it. Um, the SEC thing isn't going to matter. Now, mm-hmm. new investors, large money, on ramps, off ramps, coin bases, those type of people care um, only because of the legalities. But uh, your normal crypto investors or or you know, people, they don't, they don't really care. Um, And I do agree. I, I think it could, it could hinder it a little bit, but I don't think we're going to skip a bull market. Um, You know, it it may not be quite as strong as we want it to be, but we're still going to see some, some nice returns. And and like I said, I I don't think there'll be a whole lot. And, 
you know, Thomas, look on the flip side. You know, that is that is a bad uh, a bad scenario. But what if they do get it dismissed? What if it's dismissed by June or July um, or even October for 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 that yeah. matter? Yeah, um, you still have a you know pretty much another year of upside. So I don't think um, you, you know when you think of the bad things, you also got to think of the good things that could happen too. Um, and and remember, there's a powerhouse uh, setup of attorneys that are behind us on this one. So yes, I do agree. I'm holding regardless too, no matter what happens. But um, you know. Always, always keep in mind both sides and, you know, yes, they can drag things out in court, but hopefully we can get it settled a lot sooner and we don't even have to worry about it. And things will definitely get dragged out. I mean, not only because of, uh, you know, like the SEC has literally nothing to lose like this. Anybody can file a lawsuit against sure. anybody. You know what I mean? So and unlimited well, funds. Exactly. And they're in a government entity that, you know, hopefully somebody is going to break up uh, these thugs at some point. But, you know, they, they they have nothing to lose. It's a monetary shakedown where they attack somebody else, in this case, Richard Harp, but they attack other people as well um, to shake down technology that they couldn't have ever dreamed of created so they can just get a piece of the pie. That's what it is. So um, I don't think three or four years uh, it, it, I, I don't think it's going to take that long. And yeah. like you said, Ewok, I mean, we are in the, actually, I think we're in the best possible position with this scenario right now. Like even think back to December um, before we, before Richard came out publicly and said, Hey, we're fighting the sec uh, here. Here's team of attorneys and they have 11 different attorneys, some of which have worked with the SEC, keep in mind, you know, I mean, these are extremely credible people that have yeah. you know, won super notorious law firms. Um, be happy that you have all that information and know about that information and that yeah. he has acknowledged it and is totally taking it on. You know, you could still be in the dark about the whole scenario and, you know, not know what's going on, you know? Um, so I, I think we're in the best possible way we could be with that. Um, that said, something I want to say, because I think people are getting a little over eager sometimes. I See, here's the thing. With these kind of things, there's always a middle ground. And that's usually there's a middle ground that's like 80, you know, 60 to 80 percent in the middle. And that's that's usually what's going to happen. Then you have 20 percent out here. Oh, hey, this could take three or four years. We're going to miss the, the bull market. And then over here you have this is going to get dismissed on April 8th, um, you know. No, I, I say no to both of those scenarios. But yeah, we're, let's juxtapose Thomas's point there <clears throat> with what we're seeing on Twitter. We, you and I were talking about this the other day. I think people need to stop with this. Oh, what if it gets dismissed this month? How many X's do we do? I, I think the chances of it getting dismissed this month are absolutely like minuscule. Yes, the motion to dismiss will be due. It will be very interesting to read that. I'm excited to see that. Uh, we'll all kind of be, you know, look checking out the Nuclear Herbs Twitter to see what his thoughts are on it as well. Um, but it'll be really interesting to see what it is they have planned. But, I, you know, a judge still has to sit with that. There still is a timetable. The SEC has, um, I think it's until July or something like that, to respond to the motion. Right. So, I mean... Yeah, these people that are getting giddy about that right now just because the motion to dismiss is due, I, I would cool your jets a little bit. Um, the SEC, like we already said, they have nothing to lose. They're going to postpone, you know, draw it out as, as long as they can and, you know, wait until they yeah. get a little payment and probably then walk away or something like and, that. And don't forget, the amicus brief was brought up as well. You know, we can mm -hmm. talk about that. You know, they are... Um, mentioning that 43, they mentioned the number 43,000, I think, for a yep. reason. Yeah. Um, and I would love to see us get to 50 by the time, you know, it gets anywhere further. Um, just to say, well, it was 43, now it's 50,000. And there's another mm -hmm. one, I believe, that uh, Coffee's group has started as well. Yes. So we'll have two amicus briefs um, in our back pocket, pretty much. So I don't know if that one is Coffee's group necessarily. I know he tweeted about it, but it is from like an organization called I Can. 
Um, I should have looked further into this, but yeah, it's basically, it's a model set up where not that I'm not saying that pulsepetition.org won't be taken at all seriously. I think that it can and will be in some respects, but this other organization has, you know, a lot of other things I think they've done under their belt that would okay. lend itself to even more credibility is I guess what it is. But yeah, I didn't look into who they were either really. <clears throat> and I shouldn't have said coffee's group. I, coffee was the one that, that, uh, that retweeted it and, yeah. and mentioned them. So yeah, I, I misspoke there. Sorry. No, it's good. Um, the last thing that I wanted to say on this issue um, is the other day. So th- just to, and actually this is going to sound bearish. I actually think it's incredibly bullish, but uh, that's just me. But the other day, Toby won Hexobi, which popular on uh, Matty Allen's obviously stream, which he does tonight, usually like right now. <laughs> um, he's on there quite frequently. Toby is. And he had a poll the other day where he said like, how many X's do you think Pulse will do if, the case were dismissed. I don't know if he said like this month or when it is dismissed, or I, I think he may have meant like now on this timeline, which would have made sense for a poll question. And by far of the options that he gave, he had like no pump at all. We'll pump in the bull market uh, two to five X immediately off of the news. I forget the third option. I'm guessing some like a little bit higher than that. And then it, he had a 10 X the majority of the votes went to a 10x in a pulse price pump if it were dismissed. I mean, I think that is ridiculous. I mean, I just can't even, and I'm not saying anything to do with like Pulse's recent performance or anything like that. These you guys are giving the SEC too much credibility, like like what Thomas said a minute ago. No one gives a shit about this like i don't even see anybody talking about this there's nobody i don't see hardly anybody that's you know afraid and maybe that's the point maybe you can't see them or whatever but nobody looks at this as if it's an issue really um i don't see i just think the thought of doing a 10x off of the case being dismissed is is ludicrous i i could see something like a 2x um you know like right off the news and then it you know retracing because i don't give any credibility to this lawsuit i don't give any credibility yeah. to the sec it's never had any bearing on what i thought about sure it makes the chart look different at different times but i i still think we'd be where we are i don't think that it matters so um i i know you you called me out whenever you saw my response to the results on that tweet but what, what were your thoughts on that well i i said two to five uh that was m- my response i believe uh to the poll um mm-hmm. yeah i think it would have an immediate effect and you know see it or not there is definitely a chilling effect that has been created um you know but i think the people that have been here uh the people that have been around long enough to know realize what's going on and aren't really concerned about it um it's the it's the newbies it's the people that we need the outside money to get in um, that are still a little bit leery of it because when they do any kind of research, you, you know, they may, may be one of the things that they find and they don't know what's going on. They don't know there's a powerhouse team of lawyers. They don't know uh, that Richard is kind of battling for all of crypto. They don't know uh, the backstory of Hex and how that came about. And um, there's just so many things. They don't know that he is a self-help author that's written books to help you quit smoking and quit gambling and, you know, give better apologies and things like there's a lot to it, right? That people just don't know. Um, So I think there's a lot of outside forces that would be affected that would come in. Um, But I, I, again, I I don't think it would be a 10 X right away. Um, But I think it would, I think it would definitely catapult it a little bit faster than, than what we're seeing right now. Yeah. I think the, I think it would be a sell the news event. I mean, I wouldn't sell, obviously I don't mean it like that, but I I think we would see a uh, huge green candle right off of the news, but I think we would, you know, slightly retrace it over a few days. I mean, yeah, there'd be exuberance and stuff like that, but you know, I, I don't, nobody really seems to think that it's much of a threat. So I, I just don't think there'll be much more. Um, or you Katie. get one of those God candles that d- just blow everything out of the water and it never comes back. 
because I know Hex had one of those um, at one point, one of those candles where it just took off and it, it never looked back. So mm -hmm. it's a possibility. I, I, I don't give it, you know, maybe 30% odds of that happening, but it, it's definitely a possibility. I think if that were to happen, it would have to be a later time frame where that could be something that's going to happen anyway around that time. And maybe that news just could go with it, maybe. But yeah, yeah KD says, I agree, two to five X and then an immediate dump to sack rate. I mean, I don't know about what price it'll be, but in terms of like, you know, immediate response, that's just my thoughts. But uh, yeah, um, I, I just have never taken it seriously. So yeah. um, anyway, uh, let's move on from this because I don't really want to talk about it anymore um let, let let we'll finish this off with the sec so if you guys are enjoying the stream do us a favor hit the like button we do this every tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern standard time so the sec and their little tussle with coinbase now so the other day uh judge file faila faila um she rejected coinbase's motion to dismiss and a lot of people you know in relation to the richard hart stuff were like oh what is this going to mean for us we're screwed uh, you know misinterpreting everything um but she was specifically citing the staking program that coinbase offers on their centralized exchange um that that is the reason that they engage in unregistered off uh engage in unregistered off and sale of security so um it's fine that the motion to dismiss was not granted but when has it ever been proven that any of these are securities that that are on their site that's the thing so the sec is alleging that they're selling unregistered securities none of them have been proven not a token uh has been you know proven to be a security including ripple which you know if anything was going to be a security it would be ripple so um yeah so i a lot of people looked at this as bad news. I mean, I, I don't really think of it that way. That they're just you're talking about dismissing an entire case, and she's falling back on the fact that they have a staking program on a centralized exchange, which I would never participate in, you know, and I don't think people should. Um, but anyway, none of these have actually been classified as securities, and the SEC does not provide any clarity or information on that. Um, Coinbase, I think, still looks really good in this case, and um you know, this is only regarding the staking program. So right. I think the judge kind of maybe tipped her hand a bit. Um, I mean, totally did. Um, and and saying like the staking program is the problem. So, right. yeah, what do you make of that? Because I people are like, oh, no, this is bad news or whatever. I mean, for what we're interested in, what I think most real people or real crypto people are interested in, this isn't something I would never participate in anyway. So I, I don't look at this as incredibly bad news. It's just that the case right. is going to go on. So what do you mean? Well, that? as far as clarity goes, you know, it looks like Gary's here. Um, we could probably ask him just to. Ah, there he is. Okay. <laughs> um, no problem. Gary. No. Yeah, to... no, I, um, I, I agree. I think that, you know, they've been going after staking, you know, Gemini's staking program. They had, um, who else was it? There was a couple other ones that they basically said, you know, can't do that anymore. They had to remove them. Um, basically what it is, is they're protecting their banksters who don't want to give somebody a better option um, of yield or interest. So, you know, that's all it is. And they'll call it an unregistered security because you're staking and earning more. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. I, I really think that's all it is. So, you know, it, as far as that goes, they would have to do something. I don't know what the outcome would be if Coinbase just stops its it, its staking um, and they call it a day. Uh, that could be as easy as that is, and then it's over. Um, or you know, if they do get some sort of, I'm sure they'll get a fine, whatever it is for uh, participating in that. They still have it. I'm pretty sure you still leave USDC and Coinbase and earn. Yeah, you're right. You can. So, I mean, it's it's still there. So it hasn't uh, deterred them, at least, or, or, you know, had them take it down. But, yeah, I mean, I think that's a, a, as simple as that. that that's, that's pretty much what it is. And, again, for, for them, um, it's narrowing it down to what they have to fight now, right? <laughs> if they're narrowed down to basically one thing, you know, they're in kind of a similar boat that um, – that Richard's in with his, his attorneys, if we can kind of narrow it down and uh, you have one, one battle to fight rather than three or four different things and all these different coins and 
um, calling this or that. And you know, it all goes back to clarity. It all goes back to them saying, are these really securities or not? And they won't decide. Um, at some point, one of these judges is going to say, listen, if you can't determine whether it's a, a commodity or a security, how can we say what they're doing is securities violation? Um, one of them is going to have to, at some point, I, I just don't understand why it hasn't been done already. Why can't you classify this um, as as one or the other? And then we can kind of move on. I yeah, I agree. And, you know, this is a good time actually to mention because I, I had this on my show notes here for us for weeks that it just didn't really ever come up. But just so everybody knows, um, like some of the shady tricks of the SEC and, and maybe I shouldn't accuse them of like they definitely are behind this. But for the life of me, I can't imagine anybody just having this as a hobby. Um, but on any video that we've ever released uh, of SEC's dealings specifically with Coinbase, no other SEC video. We could be talking about anything to do with the SEC against any other entity or whatever. I've never seen this before. But every time we upload one, and this is going to be one of them right here that I'm talking on right now, so they can respond to my exact, you know, you can reply to me in the comments right now. <laughs> um, a bunch of bots in favor of the SEC uh, start expanding in the comments about everything the coinbase is doing wrong like it's it, and it's programmed they all comment at like the same time i get a barrage of different messages on our videos all from the and it'll all be like michael thompson six five four three you know chris tragen you know, like it's it's just all all formatted names the exact same and it's bots from the sec like you know, the th Coinbase really needs to own up to what they're doing here. And it's just like, what in the hell? Because when I first started to see them, I was like, who in the hell has this opinion? This, this makes no sense at all. And then, you know, they need to work on their algorithm a little bit, I guess, because they, they were all coming in at exactly the same time and they all had similar names. So I just started deleting them and then just putting, um, you know, just basically putting at the top of the our videos that like, hey, these are clearly bots if you want to check them down below. So hi, guys, you're probably watching this one right now. Um, yeah, just interesting that they do employ tactics like that. Even on, I mean, we don't even have 4,000 subscribers. So I don't know like what links they go to to try to, uh, you know, run this propaganda machine, but I've always found that very interesting. Yeah, so. I'm sure they, I'm sure they have bots or, you know, there's different things out there that sift through looking for certain keywords and, uh, and then they go in and, and make comments. I, I'm pretty sure that's all it is, but yeah, we trigger, we seem to trigger it on some of our videos and I hope you just block them. For, I mean, that's what I would do, but. Well, I can't block them from commenting necessarily, but I just delete their stuff. I, I I've been reporting them basically and then they just get removed. So, um, anyway, so that's yeah. that. Uh, yeah, their propaganda department is, uh, Wait, sorry. Their propaganda department is better than their Twitter offset. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're definitely right about that, Gunblazer. Yeah, I forgot about that one already. Yeah. Um, good stuff. Uh, let's boy, there was so much stuff. Okay, we have to cover this. Okay. So the reveal of the infamous Maria, the dev behind the Atropa ecosystem, allegedly. Um, that look, full disclosure. Uh, Ewok and I, as far as uh, Atropa, PDI, uh, the different tokens that are within there, uh, Teddy Bear is part of that ecosystem. Um, Ewok take, has taken a much more cautious, skeptical eye of it all th than I have. But And we're also not like the premier people to talk to. We haven't like combed through the telegrams and the on-chain data to connect the dots and show you that, you know, like that uh, Charlie from Always Sunny in Philadelphia uh, meme with um, all the written stuff on the wall behind him. We haven't gone that deep. So mm -hmm. don't come here for that. Um, but it is highly intriguing to see and I, I forget his actual full name, but uh, we'll just continue with Maria. Uh, it is a male. Um, but the, the dev behind Atropa, basically, the, this video leaked of this meeting in Zurich. Um, there was a few different parts. I think it's all told there is like an hour of video, but I've seen so many snippets and like different pieces of it and things like that with um, him being kind of interviewed by a few different people. It's more, more like a conversation, I'd say, than an interview. Um how, how, I mean, there was number one, just the fact that this person is like, you know, doxxed now, apparently. Um, and some of the things that he said, you know, of intrigue was, 
uh, the quote, when, not if, PDI gets to a dollar. Um, and indicated how that would be good for hex and hex parity on both chains and how liquidity could work um, with PDI getting to a dollar and things like this. Um, I, I didn't watch it, you know, over and over with a fine tooth comb. I didn't, but it was intriguing. I did passively watch it and I wanted to get some of your thoughts on it, Ewok. I'm sure, I mean, PDI is at all time highs right now. I know um, Atropa, of course, is doing well too, but what do you make of this? I mean, like a lot of people are speculating like, hey, th this dude has to have talked to Richard. Like he just, you know, he seems, um, you know, in the know anyway, or at least, you know, th maybe they've exchanged something. I don't know. I, I find it highly interesting and I'm excited to see how it unfolds further. Yeah. But what did you make of what you have seen? Well, the same way. I I'm excited, interested, I guess. I just want to see how it all plays out. Um, but there's so much talk of all these different things. Um, it really, you, you know what it reminds me of? I think I mentioned this to you before too, was the whole Zen thing, how mm -hmm. we're going to create 15 different protocols in order to pump one. Um, it, right. and you just lose people. Like, I mean, obviously there are people in there that know every single protocol and every single this and that, and he's talking about launching a layer two. And like, why the fuck do we need a layer two? We haven't even built our layer one. Um, it, it just there's it. It's so deep. It, it's fascinating. I mean, obviously the guy's intelligent. Uh, you, you can tell by he, the way he speaks. Um, half of it you don't understand. The normal people don't understand it um, because his so, look also. It just he, his look is clearly yeah. a guy who spends a lot of time you in know. front of a computer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's yeah. Be honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean. I, again, I'm still sold on the whole, PDI could get to a dollar. Um, I, I just don't ever see it pegging. Um, you know, crazier things have happened, whatever. I, I just haven't dove in that deep to it. Um, and I don't really care to. We've got too many other things. Um, honestly, I, I'm more fascinated with the whole, um maker situation that richard has and that's one of the things he put a bunch of money into the maker um thing and got the what is it the the stable eth or yeah whatever the s s, s die, die. The, s yeah. die there's a whole lot of things that um that i think he can control and that he can do um i, I do not see this external party um having a whole lot to do with with richard you know richard's one of those guys where he wants it done he wants to do it himself um and, and i just don't i just don't see it happening um with with all of this and them being in cahoots and working together now do, do they have to work together absolutely not you know other people can do other things on their own without the help of him um it, it just like i said it seemed to be such a a tangled web of this and that and 15 other things in order to get this to happen. And it almost felt like we were just building a house of cards. Um, and if one of those potentially didn't work out, it could bring the whole thing down. Um, I, again, I, I'm at the point where, like I said, I, I don't dismiss PDI getting to a dollar. I still dismiss it pegging to a dollar. Uh, because way too many people got it for extremely cheap. Um, and, and I think they'll sell. I, I mean, I, I think it's going to sell so drastically once it gets to that position. Yes, there will be a lot of people taking profits on the way up and more people buying in. Uh, but when you don't buy something for a dollar, you don't value it at a dollar um, a lot of times, um, especially a so-called stable coin. Um, and that's just my take on it. And, you, you know, it's going to take a a lot of probably watching a lot of those videos and things like that to even understand halfway what they're planning on doing. So, again, my fault for not digging deep into it, but that's my opinion as it stands right now. Um, like I said, I'm more fascinated with the SDI potential um, for a on-chain stable coin that that could possibly work out for us um, since we can't seem to get 
USDC or any of those guys to say, yeah, we'll support that chain too. Right. Hasn't happened yet. Doesn't mean it won't. Um, I, I think with, with some credibility, with a full with a full cycle behind it, um, there is that possibility as well. But you know, when Richard talks about things that he's been cooking up and he's got some ideas and things to do, um, I, I think we'll soon see those, and I think that's probably one of them. Yeah, uh, I think so too. But I will say, um, Footstep says that you are uh, of rational mind. I am an irresponsible, you know, I'm flying <laughs> off, off the handle because I think PDI is getting to a dollar. I don't know if it's going to peg to it, but I, I'm fully behind this. Uh, I, I am I am intrigued by the Maria and Atropa stuff. I just want to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not heavily invested in anything. I'm just kind of, you know, watching it to see how things develop. I think it's very interesting. Um, and oh, and it's hey, it's definitely interesting. Sorry, it's, it's interesting. Well, the the thing, the thing too, and this is more of like just if you're making a decision to invest in PDI, <clears throat> even the 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 idea that like okay we know the target like you know the market that is speculating on will this peg or will this get to a dollar you the dollar is the number you know with a lot of with any other asset you're just like you know maybe you'll throw out stuff like oh i hope it's going to do 100x or i hope it does this x like p dot like it's right the sh it's a dollar like you know what the target is and i think that is appealing for people who invest because like okay we're x this amount of x is away from a dollar you know and i think that that's just a thing that people's minds gravitate to you know what i mean um mm -hmm. it's easy for them to make decisions to invest in that so i don't know i hope more maria stuff comes out um i, I thought it was very interesting um you know and uh maybe i'll watch it again because it, yeah. it uh i think there was probably stuff i missed so um good stuff well, indeed i only saw the very short interview i think it was like eight or nine minutes long it was a a very chopped version mm -hmm. of it i like you said i know there is one out there that is over an hour long um if I get yeah. the opportunity where I'm not really doing anything one day, I'll, maybe I'll give it a watch and try to make sense of it. Like I said, there's a lot of talk of, of, of some of these things. I just don't feel that they're necessary at this point. Like I said, why do we need a layer two? I, I just, I don't think, but apparently it's got a place in the, in the house of cards. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I definitely understand that. Like I, and I didn't necessarily see where the layer two stuff was posted, but that I understand like this early in the game, why would we be talking about that? So I get it. Um, you know, it's one of those things in, in crypto, I think, and you know, we do it with Richard Hart. I'm sure people do it with Maria. Um, but it's like you appeal to authority or in this case, appeal to like intellect. You know what I mean? And our friend wall to wall, who was spewing his normal negativity earlier, um, was mocking some Richard Hart talking points. I get that. Like I get when you hear people uh, parrot the same thing, whether it be from a Richard or Maria or whoever it is. Um, it's like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like sometimes you just want to feel like that. But yeah, keep in mind, like there are going to be lemmings with anybody who is an intellect and has a large following. There will be lemmings that just parrot stuff and there's no real brain in there. You know what I mean? Right, and right. I that's probably where wall to wall comes from and like some of the other people that get turned off. I, I understand that. But Richard Hart's a pretty goddamn smart guy still. Yeah, I, I fully believe that. And it's why I'm so heavily invested in this ecosystem. And, you know, I don't know enough about Maria yet, but I mean, he seems like a pretty goddamn smart guy enough that I would like to um, see where things are going, you know? So, sure. Um, without, That's without you, you can't be brainless either though. You can't just be like, Oh, he says this, I'm going to do this. You know I mean? Right. Think about the people out there that are like out touting Jack Levin, like saying like, um, you know, uh, the first principles and blah, 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 you know, I imagine people still spewing that stuff with everything that's gone on. So, yeah. Well, anyway. you know, it's one thing to, to preach first principles and then turn around and do the opposite. Um, I, I know there were right. some, <laughs> some people that were VCs that were contacted to, to purchase or to, to get into a 11 thing. And, you know, that's not first principles at all. So he kind of right. talks one way and then talks out of one side of his mouth and then talks out the other side and does something completely different. Yeah. Well, once I think the target might be a hundred tokens and once we get there, his, his uh, grand mission will be complete. So, Maybe um, so. 
moving on, let's finish off with this. I think this is the most interesting other topic, and uh, I know that people get annoyed with this man, and I understand why. Um, but Bob Lucas, uh, he of the Bitcoin four-year cycles, he talks a lot about four-year cycles with Bitcoin. And I, I always make this, I always per proceed in my comments about Bob Lucas with this. Yes, I understand he's trolled Hex in the past and stuff like that. I don't think he really gives a shit about it. It's just, you know, engagement farming and stuff like that. What I do and what I would encourage anybody else to do is take the good from the people. Take, everybody has some good stuff and some bad stuff. Just take the good stuff from everybody you can, or the, for, for lack of a better term, like the stuff that at least resonates with you. Okay. Uh, Bob Lucas is just a long term swing trader that I do believe understands the uh, Bitcoin four year cycle. And I take that from him. I don't take from him. Um, you know, shitting on Richard Hart and shitting on Hex. I don't think he understands the greater scope of crypto and and that's fine. Um, but I do think, you know, as far as his charting and this stuff, I think is uh, is good. So he put out a new like 45 minute video about the four year cycle. And I was really intrigued to watch this one because with all the talk that we've had recently, Ewok of, you know, is this a left translated cycle? Bitcoin way higher than we've ever thought it would be by now, blah, 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 blah. Um, he does these videos, Bob Lucas, bi-monthly or monthly, and at this point, believes there's about a 60% chance of the left translated cycle scenario, where basically what would happen is, okay, we have saw this kind of big rise for Bitcoin already in 2024, and that would then lead to maybe later into the fall, a, another, a, he believes, much higher top, but early, th like in this year, not deep and not spring or fall of 2025 which would be a normal cycle that we're all accustomed to that would be the normal lineup is that we see a new bitcoin all-time high you know mid to late 2025 um or that the, the, i should say the top of the bull market um yeah, yeah he, he's noted how strong the market is now with major players entering and the etf which hey even richard hart has talked a lot about too and richard now betting pretty much on an ethereum etf uh, but Lucas says the left translated cycle would call for a huge blow off later this year. And then things get pretty brutal starting mid to late 2025. So basically front running by, you know, six, give or take six, eight months or something like that from what a normal cycle would be. Because in the normal cycle, we would be thinking if it was anything like last time, late 2021, November is when we had the new Bitcoin all time high and alts ran higher than they ever had. And then, um, we it, it, a month later, actually, really, uh, it was November and then December things started to pull back and then it got really brutal to start 2022. Um, so, yeah, you could see we'd have a, a big all time high later this year, start crashing sometime in 25. Um, and I kind of think it's interesting that Lucas only put a 60 percent chance on Bitcoin smashing. All expect because on the left translated cycle, I should say, because Bitcoin has smashed expectations so much so far this year. So to me, he's pretty much still 50 50, even with this bullish action. So, um, I appreciate that footsteps. Uh, but yeah, what do you make of that Ewok? Yeah, just um, the, the, the chances of the left translated cycle. I mean, I, I again, it's that appeal to authority thing, and I'm not going to say like hey, Bob Lucas said this, oh, this is what I got to do now. I, uh, you know. It, He's throwing a dart, but he's, you know, sure. he basically said, oh, 50-50, left translated her. You know? <laughs> so at yeah, the end of the day, what's he really so he, but, so he's not putting anything on the line by saying it, you know. Not, he's... Yeah, not necessarily. But th that's why that last interesting point I made was like, I am surprised he just said 60% chance when it's been so juicy so far. So to yeah. me, that actually, I think, means he still feels fairly likely about the regular cycle because – it looks so good so far. So. Well, yeah, it looks good. There's, but the, again, it's it's completely different this time. It's got the you know we've got the ETF. We've got a lot of big uh, people buying. Um, there's a lot of big people selling though too. I mean, black you got BlackRock now invested heavily, but you've got uh, MicroStrategy. Uh, did you see they're buying Ethereum uh, the other day? I didn't see that. No. I didn't so see that. yeah, they're starting to buy Ethereum. So. Again, I think it's going to be a regular cycle until it's not a regular cycle. We've got to see something that that leads us different. Um, and, and to me, um, other than seeing a, an early top, which I think was all caused by the ETF, that's the only thing that's really changed. Um, mm -hmm. 
I, I don't see it. I, I just don't see the left translated cycle happening. I, I see it playing out as normal um, into 2025. Um, until until we don't see it, then then we have like, oh, okay, well, now it could be different. I think a lot of people say this stuff just to say, well, I was right. I, I called it. Um, and, but they don't really have anything to go on. <laughs> I mean, right. there's, it's just like you said, it's, it's like throwing a dart and maybe it hits. Yeah, we got 50% chance of it. Well, we don't really have 50% chance. It's probably more like 80-20. Um, because we've never seen it before, and until it changes, it's it's gonna stay the same. So th- that's just my opinion. I, I like I said, I think a lot of these guys say a lot of things for for just the the chance that it don't does criticize happen. Bob Lucas. I don't, don't like criticize. <laughs> I'll hate. flat out say it. I don't like him. I'm not a fan of people that do that stuff for the engagement. Yeah, I, I, I get it, but like, but I, like, you I got understand. To be I respect able. him. I respect his opinions. I respect his, um, his economic, whatever his, you know, his education in, in the whole atmosphere here. But I, I think I just, he can read cycles. I mean, I th- I, I do yeah, think he, sure. can, he can do that, and I, I respect his ability to do that. But sure. I don't know that I would share a beverage with the guy. Well, yeah, I, I have nothing in, in common with them. I don't really care for. Like I said, I, anybody that 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 pulls the engagement bait, I, I'm not a fan of. You, you yeah, know, it, I, you, I understand. It, it does lead you to be a little bit skeptical of them. Yeah, when they very do much that. So. It's Like, what are you, what are you doing? What you else know? are you doing? You know what I mean? It, yeah. it just you do one shady thing and and it casts casts a lot of doubt in my mind. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm not a fan of the guy. Um, I don't agree with the, the left translated thing, and um, that's my take. So, uh, good comment here, uh, from John J. UK. Yeah, we need to get a league table. Um, I'll tell you right now, John J., I would, I would currently be Liverpool, is all I'm going to say. Uh, last I checked, they're leading the EPL, I believe. So, and how about that? If you are in the UK, which I imagine you are, I would like your thoughts on, uh, on the EPL right now. Cause I just saw the other day, I looked at the table the other day and man, Liverpool, Man City and Arsenal all very tight. And usually like, Arsenal is kind of a joke, but, uh, it's interesting. They're, uh, doing so well this year, but, um, but yeah, I, 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 all things said, I mean, like I, I will take what Bobby Lucas can offer and take the good stuff, but I, I am with you that like, Hey, the left translated has never happened before. And the left translated starting to become like a lot of people are starting to expect it now, like because Bitcoin just did this, which has been amazing. You know, I mean, it, it's been crazy that Bitcoin's been able to do this. Many people are getting baited into that now. Yeah. So yeah, all the more was, reason it's not going to. <laughs> yeah, if, if there were if there were ever a time where you would start to like like oh yeah, everybody's kind of coalescing on this idea, um, it'd be great. And it we're seeing it right now. If this pullback we're seeing right now continues, Bitcoin at sixty five k right now, um, that's good. This is when we we want to see this correction right now. Yep. We want to see I you know we want to see it come down further, and ideally ETH and alt start to come up, bring Bitcoin down into the fifty k's, probably even into the high forty k's again or something like that, and let let's get back on a normal pace. Yep. You know I think that's what we really would want. So, um, I thought it was good food for thought anyway to kind of go over what he saw. But yeah, I mean the more people that are looking at left translated, um, the less likely it will be. I agree with you there. So. Um, there you go. Liverpool yeah, supporter. Liverpool yeah. supporter there for you. I, as a guy in the States, um, this is going to sound really stupid, but I, I always liked Leicester city and I know they've been relegated now. Um, but I just thought their kits were cool. I liked the, uh, King power on their blue jerseys. I thought that was cool. Um, hex girl, the recent BTC downturn is more like a regular four year cycle. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like if this pullback continues right now, you know, it got frothy just too quick. So um, was it the ETF? That's what a lot of people are pointing to, Richard Hart included. So, yeah. What do we got from DJ and Moonboy? Well, he said this earlier, but he says, I feel like it's an information cycle. Everyone's learned how to read and report on the blockchain, which is good. I, I like the fact that people are getting knowledgeable and learning and um, uh, taking the time and the energy to, to read blockchain, to do a little bit of... Uh, you know, research and see who's doing what. I, I like that. I, you mm-hmm. know, it's better than just a bunch of people on Robinhood investing and thinking that they're going to get rich. 
it, it, no, I'm serious. It, it's good. Yeah. I, I no. you know, it, it's good to build that base. So, you know, each cycle when people get washed out, as long as that base can get a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, um, eventually, you know, things are going to be uh, more normal. You're going to see less huge drawbacks. And we're already seeing it with the big, the bigger coins. You know, you're, you started with Bitcoin. It started at a 95% drawback. Then the next cycle, it was 80 or, you know, 90% and then 85 and, you know, now down to 80% drawback. So each time each cycle happens, you're going to get a, a less of a pullback, more normal um, uh, of a cycle. And I think that, you know, I think that's good. It just shows the growth. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And um, John Jay, continuing on this point, says, what's your thoughts on BTC running up at the end of the year and everyone shouts left translated, then it shoots up again in 25? Surely all the ETF interest in Mr. Fink's comments will bring money in. I mean, I think if... Um, so he's saying if, if BTC runs up at the end of the year and everyone shouts... I mean, I don't know if they will or not. I mean, I, I think it would have to... I think we would have to see like crazy run up at the end of the year. And I'm not sure exactly what you mean there, but I think if we get to like obvious, clear, like not just like all oh, triple top, like we saw here so far at about 73 K, if we saw like 110 or even a hundred BTC, that's when it would be like, okay, this may be left translated because that that's kind of too early for that. Um, mm -hmm. It's too early. And I think, yeah, I, I think we could possibly see another double top. Like we saw last cycle. Right. Um, because now that's a thing, right? <laughs> so mm -hmm. you kind of either expect it until it doesn't happen again. Um, and that was between what April and November. So right. there was, you know, quite a, a six months in there that, you know, you know to, to make that double top it didn't last long. Uh, but, you know, you could at least expect it. Yeah, um, I, I see what he's saying. Just enough for folks to think it's left translated and then sure. we, we get another blowout in 25. I mean, maybe. I think if we get to like a, a number like 100 this year, I would be confident that that is actually a, le a left translated cycle because that would be so bullish that so bullish so soon um, that I'd be I would want to be taking profits assuming we ever move. Uh, you know, all coins really move hard. Um, I, that's what I would want to be doing a little bit at that time. If if we were that good that early, anyway, I'm not saying like everything. I'm just saying I would be interested to see where we're at. So um, if you're saying if it hits 100k by the end of 2024, you're calling left translated cycle. Yeah, I would say if we got really? that high, and and, and I and I will say there. this, not really. That's thirty thousand away still. Yeah, well, no, not really. I mean, I, I here's what I'll say. I, I, I'll just say this. I don't think that scenario is going to happen. Uh, like, I think that's too in between. I think we're either going to get whatever you want to call it, quadruple top or something like that, or like get back into the 70s towards the end of this year, continue on a normal cycle, or we're going to go to like 140 this year or like way, way higher than 100K. I, I don't think it'll just be 100K. That would just be... That would really be confusing, I think. Um, that well, number, but you you realize though that it went from forty k. Where was it? Back here, January. So from January to March, two months, it made thirty thousand. It only mm -hmm. took two months. So, okay. you know, another 30,000 in, in by the end of the year, which we're, you know, we've got eight months left. I don't know. I, I just, uh, I could see it hitting a hundred thousand without being a, a left translated cycle. I mean, I guess maybe a hundred. I just, that's not a number that I would think is likely. I think it would either be less than that as we get ready to really blow off in 25, or it would be a bigger blow off. That's yeah. just kind of too in the middle for me, I guess. I didn't really consider that number, I guess. But um, anyway, a lot, lot of scenarios. The main thing is just to be prepared for either one. Like, just be prepared for what <laughs> may be happening here. And, uh, you know, first off, we have to actually, like, 
move up ever. Sure. So, right I, now, I all we need to, you know, all we're doing is still DCA. So, I mean, that that's really all we can worry about right now. So, um, I think it's going to wrap things up. Uh, this has been a good show. Um, I like, I like this better. Yeah, I'll take a super cycle. Uh, that would be that would be nice for sure. Or just a normal one. Um, you know, just a normal right translated cycle and uh, yeah. see where things go with these ETFs and stuff like that. But for now, you know, as far as talking about the Pulse Chain ecosystem here, obviously still DCA, you know, just is what it is. You know, I, it, it's, it's to the point where I think everybody would be helped by, you can say it to your blue in the face, but zooming out, looking at time. Like it is still April of 24. Like, we, we've seen a move up. I'd like to be even better than where we are right now. We're not. So, you know, we've really always been aiming for deep into 2025. So just keep at it. Um, if you want to capitulate, you can certainly do that too. I mean, yeah. I've noticed on Twitter, I will say this, um, is dabbling back in a little bit this week. The negativity, it, it start to, it's starting to seem like people have gotten washed out, or at least there's some silence now. Yep. Last yep. week, there was like massive anger, massive depression, massive drama. Now I'm see, I just am see, I, it might just be me ignoring it, but I'm, I'm just not seeing as much. I think some people went away, you know, <laughs> I've seen that too. And I was going to, I was actually going to comment on that. If you asked me if yeah. I had any last thoughts and Go ahead. Um, I, I've noticed that too. And I don't know if it's because I've muted the people that are most negative um and maybe they're still out there uh i'm just not seeing it but if you guys are are experiencing that at all uh don't be afraid to mute people um if you see somebody that every post they make is negative or hate on this or hate on that or um tell somebody they're doing something the wrong way um just mute them for a little while it it definitely helps your own psyche it helps you believe and and get around the people that do believe in, in this long term, which you, you know we both do a lot. Um, I don't say much on on X anymore or Twitter. I I, I don't I, I just don't um, because you're either met with one of those people where you thought was a friend um, who has turned negative, um, or it just starts an argument where people just like to get on there and argue with you. Um, I kind of, I kind of just stopped posting, uh, you know, it, it, there's not a whole lot to say right now. It's just one of those times. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it's definitely affecting you, don't be afraid to mute people. You don't have to block them. Uh, you don't have to un unfollow or anything like that. Just mute them and, uh, check back in, in four months. I bet, I bet things are a little bit different and, uh, people are in a much better mood. So just, uh. Keep it, keep it, keep it real. That's all. And and handle the hard situations better. That's all you can really do. You know what I noticed too? And I don't post on Twitter either. Cause it's just not, I, I don't feel that I can, like can convey anything I truly mean on a platform like that. You know, it's just words. People yeah. get offended easily and act ways in which they wouldn't if you were in public or anything. But something that's funny is like, you can tell these people kind of go on a period for lack of a better word. <laughs> like they go <laughs> through yeah. their little cycle and yep. you, you will know who I'm talking about right now. I'm not going to say their name, um, but he will, for like two weeks do this little like um i'll just say something that was said recently something like i'm done with richard hart now i'm moving on and I, i've moved past him now and it's you know just a lot of like me 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 how my angle on it it's all about me you know um and the person i'm talking about look no disrespect i invest in the stuff that he helps creates and more power to him at the end of the day i think he's uh net positive but uh these people just and then all of a sudden it's like one day <laughs> the slates wipe clean and hey all the best for paul's chain we're going to be moving up you know it's just like these people just have to go on these yeah. on the rag for a couple of weeks you know that's just I hear you. how it is i don't know it, it's there are cycles in human behavior too i guess so. sure there are and yeah. i hope nobody fell for any april fools yesterday you know believing any oh yeah anything that was one of the things i i, I was like everything i read i didn't believe yesterday they were all so bad honestly people ruined it the, the minute i woke up i saw like one preposterous tweet and then i saw another one and i'm like oh yeah it's april fool's day i'm yeah I'm not taking this seriously well when the Katie best one of the day yeah, Katie said she was getting out. She was done. I'm selling all my crypto. I'm done. 
She like, was the one. She, that was too obvious. I was like, okay. Yeah. No. The, the best one I saw the day, if anybody's familiar with the Patrick Bet David podcast, which I listen to every now and then, they had a serious press release that they hired Don Lemon um, after his, and congratulated on him on his recent stellar interview with Elon Musk and stuff. And I bought it, actually, because Bet David just hired Chris Cuomo recently. And I was like, wow. I thought maybe they were just trying to like make a splash. Like, oh, well, you know, he says he likes to talk to people of differing opinion. Maybe they really did it. I, he totally got me. So, um, yeah, good stuff. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Well, I think that'll wrap it up. Uh, thank you, everybody. DJ and Boomboy, Patrick's Astros and stuff. Uh, Hex Girl, Philly, KD, John J, Cody, Polly, uh, Farley, Familiar Fives. Uh, <laughs> some new names here tonight as well. So footsteps. Appreciate all you guys. We'll be back here next Tuesday night. Even wall to wall TV. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Especially wall to wall TV. You know, you remind us, um, you know, of, of all perspectives that are out there. So we appreciate it. Wall to wall TV. Um, we'll be back next Tuesday night, 8 PM Eastern standard time right here on the creed of crypto podcast. See you guys. Did it, did it, did it, did it. Oh, no, 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 no.